Roll20's turn tracker makes keeping track of combat order a breeze. In this video, we'll go over the ins and outs of the turn tracker so you can get back to focusing on your game. First, you'll need to open the turn order tracker. Go to the toolbar on the left side of the screen and click on the icon that looks like a clock. Keep in mind that only the GM will be able to open the tracker, but once it's open, all the players will be able to see it. Now the turn tracker works over multiple pages. If your players are on different pages, they will all show up in the GM's turn tracker, but only specific players will only see the options that are on their current page. So if there's a skeleton on page one for player one and player two is on page two, player two won't be able to see a skeleton in the turn tracker. Great, the tracker should now be visible to you and your players. Now, there's a bunch of different ways for you to add tokens to the tracker. First, you can right click on a token and then click add turn at the top. You can also click on a token you want and just hit control U. Both of these options will add a token to your tracker with an initiative of zero. Don't worry though, you can always change that number. Now, if the token you want to add to the tracker has a character sheet attached, hold shift and double click that token. This will pull up the token's character sheet. Now, click on the character sheet tab. If this token is a player character, click on the word initiative in the top center of the character sheet. If this token is a monster or NPC, click on the initiative icon with the D20 above it. After clicking initiative, the token will be added to the turn tracker with its rolled initiative. Don't worry about the map though. Roll20 already added all the modifiers for you. Just remember you always have to click on your token before you click initiative. Otherwise it won't show up in the turn order tracker. Now before you begin, you can easily change any of the values in the turn tracker by clicking on the number on the right and typing in a new number. Also, go ahead and rearrange the order if you want. Simply click and drag the names in the turn order to where you'd like them to be. When you hover over a name in the tracker, it also highlights the token it's attached to. This is really useful if you have a bunch of the same tokens in the turn order tracker. Advancing turns with the tracker is as simple as one click. Once the current person is done with their turn, simply click the arrow button at the bottom of the turn tracker. The current top turn will go to the bottom and the next one will slide up. If you ever make a mistake or you need to remove an option from the turn order, simply hover over the option on the tracker and click the red trash can that appears. Great! Let's check out what else we can do. Go ahead and click on the blue gear wheel at the bottom of the tracker. Here is your turn order settings. Clicking descending will put all the characters in turn order from highest to lowest, with the highest number being at the top. The ascending button does the opposite. A to Z and Z to A puts the list in alphabetical order. If you're using cards for turn order, like in the game Savage Worlds, you can use the miscellaneous option to sort. Now below the sorting options, you can always add a custom item field. This might come in handy if you need to add something in the turn order that doesn't have a token, like a layer action. Simply name the item whatever you'd like, for this example, layer action, and then click the add button. Great, just make sure to go back in and either type in a number or drag a roll to it. We also have the round calculation option, which is great for keeping track of things like how many rounds the battle has been going on or to keep track of how many bluffs or status conditions last. For example, say a character has been poisoned for two rounds. First, type poison in the item label. Then in the round calculation box, type in negative one. Now click add and change the value of the poison in the turn tracker to two. Great. Now once this poison item goes through a round, it will automatically decrease by one. Once it reaches zero, you know you can delete it. This is one less thing for you, the GM, to keep track of. And lastly, if you wanna remove all your tokens all at once, click the red remove all turns button. Perfect, we're back where we started. Now you can use the turn tracker order like a pro and get back to focusing on the action.